Kelly, you rock, girl. <laughs> Again, Abby. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm 58 and the mother of two teenagers, so I'm considered an older mom. And I always wanted to be a mom, so I'm okay with that. But the timing wasn't my choice. After three miscarriages, two ectopic pregnancies, and five IVFs, I finally hit the jackpot. <laughs> so my firstborn um, was a big investment. A hundred, hundred fifteen thousand dollars to be precise. And that wasn't even for the designer baby version. <laughs> You know, I guess I could have had a Cadillac, but my BW bug is adorable. <laughs> uh, the good thing about infertility is the day, the day you hate your kids, uh, you remember how much it took to get them. And you think, wow, this one's just too expensive to strangle. <laughs> all, kid, all moms are trying to get their kids into college. And if you're the mother of a daughter, you're probably trying to figure out um, how to delete their half-naked, duck-faced selfies from the internet <laughs> so they can get into college. And being an older mom, I'm um, half-grandma, kind of like you, Ali. Uh, but, uh, uh, so, and I'm conflicted. So on the one hand, I don't want my daughters to get knocked up. And on the other hand, I kind of do, <laughs> before I die. <laughs> and, um, but actually, I, I don't really mind the tension with the age gap because I'm trying to act younger. <laughs> They're trying to act older, so we have more in common. Um, you know, so we, uh, we do, get, advise each other on hair color, uh, smoke a little weed, and practice our kegels. <laughs> Um, the thing about wanting to act younger, is, and to look younger, is I'm really totally into makeup now. So I'm a little bit embarrassed to say, but we all went to New York recently, um, and we didn't go to the Met, and we didn't go to the MoMA. We made a beeline for this trendy new makeup shop called Glossier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because who wants to look at paintings when you can paint your face? I mean, Van Gogh or Vanity Glow. <laughs> the choice was easy, right? Um, yeah, so anyway, I don't know if you know much about makeup, but the trend these days is in makeup is for this really youthful, dewy glow. Um, so you have brands like Future Dew or Glam Glow, and they kind of promise that when you apply them in the evening, you're going to wake up with saintly radiance, <laughs> showing your altruism, reflecting your altruism and your bon ami, and completely ignoring what an utter bitch you really are. <laughs> I mean, talk about glossing shit over. <laughs> Uh, anyway, my kids tell me that my face is bipolar. So if I'm not smiling, I'm in doing the other extreme, like this. <laughs> uh, it uh, needs therapy, <laughs> or, or Botox, <laughs> maybe both. <laughs> Actually, I'm not bipolar, um, it's worse. I'm half Jewish and Irish Catholic, <laughs> right? I know, so I am very guilty. Talk about a double whammy of guilt. <laughs> and uh, my kids know this. And they milk it. Revenge for not breastfeeding them. <laughs> they say that if I had breastfed them, they would be much smarter than they are. But frankly, I don't need my kids to be any more clever or manipulative than they already are. Thank you. I love you. I love it. I love it. Um, I recently retired uh, from an, as an executive from the alcohol industry. And part of my job there was to review advertising campaigns to make sure they were socially responsible. So, for example, not appealing to young people, or not being so sexually explicit that they appeal to young people, <laughs> or any red-blooded adult, for that matter. Um, and my job should have prepared me for parenting, because I had to say no a lot. I remember this one ad for Bushmills Black Irish Whiskey that said, I heart Black Bush. <laughs> We all like Black Bush, but not in a goddamn campaign. And then there was another, uh, there was another campaign for flavored gins, and they were trying to appeal to palate-conscious consumers and refer to them as cunning linguists. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> no. And then there, there was 
the Smirnoff flavors fluffed and whipped. I lost that one, but I did learn what a fluffer is. Uh, I mean, I don't know. If you don't know what a fluffer is, see me after the show. <laughs> Um, so while I found it easy to say no on the job, I found it was hard to translate that, you know, hardcore doctor no persona to home. Um, surprise, surprise, I'm a soft core mom. <laughs> so when one of the kids asked me, shall not be named, asked me, hey mom, can I get a uh, cartilage piercing in my ear? I was like, honey, I don't think that's a good idea. You're going to regret it later. Three days later, three piercings later, right? Um, and then it was, hey mom, can I host a New Year's Eve party for a hundred rowdy high school sophomores? Yeah. I was like, oh sweetheart, oh, that's gonna get out of hand. It did. <laughs> and, and then the latest is, is a request for a tattoo. So mom, I, please, really, they're so cool. They'll help me express my individuality. I mean, everybody's getting one. I'm like, you know what? <clears throat> All right, on one condition, it has to say, I heart mom. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah!